Jesus. She's a girl of the word. She's passionate about the church. She could be anywhere at this moment in time speaking, but she chose to come back to design sisterhood. She's not just a, you know, she's not just a guest. She's a family of the house. Her and her husband pastor a church, the Father's House in Orange County, California, and we are pumped to have you here, Bianca. Can we give Bianca a huge welcome to Design Sisterhood Night? Woo! Ladies, what a privilege and an honor it is to be here, but hold on, hold on, before we get started, before we get started, I want to do a shout out to the mother of the house who's watching online. Can we shout out Pastor Debbie and thank her for everything she's done? But a little birdie told me that it was Savannah's birthday yesterday, so on behalf of Pastor Debbie, mother of the house, she's sending her happy birthdays. And can we as a church wish Savannah happy birthday by singing happy birthday, Randall, take it away, because I ain't got the pipes, brother. Let's go. Happy birthday oh, to you. you. Let's go, church. Happy birthday to you. Cha, cha, cha. Happy birthday, dear Savannah. Happy birthday to you. and flosses his teeth to the glory of God, hook a sister That's up, important. amen. <laughs> oh man, welcome back to church. We are having some turn up church today and it's not just here in this area for every single person watching online. We know that you're there, we love you, you are part of this. For the Joplin campus, we shout you down and say hello, what's up? We are so glad that you're here. And I know that God's hand was over this entire trip. And let me tell, I got one amen. Thank you for the Pentecostal in the back. Praise the Lord. <laughs> because I couldn't fly my normal regular carrier on the way here. And so I didn't have any status on this particular airline. But when I touched down in Dallas and I was transferring to come here, the gate agent said, Mrs. Oldhoff, we'd like to inform you that you've received a free upgrade. Y'all, I was flying first class up in the sky, all right? I mean, I was like, move over, Fergie. I'm up in here, yes, yes. A water, no, make it sparkling, because I'm fancy. <laughs> okay, so already, already, we knew that the hand of God was on this weekend, okay? Now, I don't know about you, I don't know about you. I, maybe because I grew up poor, maybe because I'm cheap, I don't know, but I love me a good upgrade. Do I have any friends in the house that love a good upgrade? Yes. Yes. Well, I remember being uh, at the Atlanta airport. I was there for a conference at the time I was working for a nonprofit organization and I was waiting in line at the Hertz rental car location to get my economy car. Because when you work for an NGO, you can't be fancy, right? So I was waiting in this very, very long line and the guy behind the desk at Hertz looked like he hadn't smiled since 1972. I mean, he wasn't having a bad day. Friends, he was having a bad decade, okay? Like, it was rough in the streets. And, and I, so I said, you know what? I'm gonna get this man to smile. I'm gonna get this man to laugh. It's gonna be my duty. So I rolled up with this huge smile, like, hi, sir, how you doing? God bless, how's your day? Praise the Lord. Frozen Chosen gave me nothing. Like, he was not having it. So I'm like, okay, I'm trying to be funny. And he said, what kind of car do you order? I said, the economy car, but you know, you can give me an upgrade. And he said, what's your name? I said, Bianca, but you can call me Beyonce because Queen drives Ferraris, okay? <laughs> and that's when he laughed. He said, girl, this is hers. We ain't got Ferraris. <laughs> he said, but let me see what I can do. I said, thank you so much. He handed me my car contract and wrote the numbers, the corresponding car to the stall located outside. Well, friends, I... I'm living on that budget life, you know, so I was approved for an economy car, like a Yaris. Now, if you have a Yaris, praise God. I mean, it's got four wheels and, and it gets you from point A to point B. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Don't, don't slide into my DMs and say, I have a Yaris and I was so offended. Okay, nope, nope, offense is a choice. I knew <laughs> that my, <laughs> that's a little breezy right there, fam. Now I knew I signed up for economy, and so I got to the economy cars, I'm looking at the number, and I walk past the economy, and past the Yaris's, 
then made it past the Priuses. So I was like, Lord, I was gonna save the environment for you and everything. <laughs> made it past the Priuses, rolled up on the Corollas, and I was like, okay. Came up to the Camrys, and I was like, won't he do it? Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. I've got power steering, power windows, power locks, yes. But I kept going. And all of a sudden, my eyes landed on this number in front of me that corresponded with the number on the contract, and you know what it was? A drop-top, loaked-out black Mercedes Benz with rims, with rims. This is when you know you're in Hotlanta, when they got rims on your rental car, okay? I got in and I said, won't he do it? Bougetto Queen, you came up, yes! Slight problem. I'm from California. I don't know how to drive stick, okay? That car was invented for the Autobahn. So I had the keys in my hand and I was like, okay, what do I do? Do I go back to my grumpy friend at Hertz and say, thank you so much for your generous upgrade, but I don't know what to do with it? <laughs> Which was my internal problem, but I had an external problem. My external problem was that I was afraid I was gonna show up to this leadership conference for nonprofit organizations rolling up like a baller and they were gonna judge me or think like I'm trying to act better or like here comes the snake sales oil, snake oil salesman just trying to fleece the flock and I'm like, oh, this is not good. So what do I do? What do I do? My internal problem, my external problem. So I said, girl, you did not come this far to stay here. We're gonna figure this out. And down the Atlanta highway, I was jerking out of gears, <laughs> but I made it to the location and parked in the back so nobody knew, okay? <laughs> the reason why I bring this up is because y'all clapped and said you love a good upgrade. Whether you are bougie or broke, we all love that. But I can't help but parallel the, the similarities that I faced on that day in Hotlanta and my faith struggle with this gift of an upgrade that God has given us. Tonight, I wanna to talk about the Holy Spirit. The reason why is my internal struggle and my external struggle, one, I didn't know how to use the car, or two, I was afraid of what people might think of me, paralleled my same spiritual journey. I was afraid that if I opened up this gift of the Holy Spirit, that I would not know what to do with it, people would judge me, think differently, or that I might think I am better because I've received this gift. So I share that because I want us to know that God has given us His Spirit as a gift for us. And my fear is that we are relying on self-help rather than spirit help that God has given us. We can walk as people empowered by the Spirit of God. And girls, I have come here to tell you, y'all got an upgrade today, okay? If you didn't know, we have an upgrade. And I say when I talk about this, the, when I talk about Holy Spirit, when I talk about the gift of the Spirit, I'm not talking about gifts of the Spirit, like faith and healing and miracles and admin, or teaching. I'm talking about the Spirit of God is the gift. And tonight, I've come with a gift. Y'all, can you bring out the gift that we have for the ladies? Yes. The beautiful thing about this is that each one of us has been given a gift. And some of us in here need an upgrade for our marriage. Some of us up in here need control and self-control for our wayward tongue. Some of us need wisdom on how to do the job that God has called us to do. Some of us need to be less aggressive, less combative, less argumentative with our friends, our cousin, our spouse, our coworkers. I have come here today to tell you, y'all, you got an upgrade, okay? You receive the gift of the Spirit. Well, back that up with Scripture. I'm so glad that you said that. Now. We see this, that when the Holy Spirit came and descended upon the disciples and the, the followers of Jesus in Acts chapter two, something changed. Now, the disconnect for me is that I grew up in a Christian home. I was not just raised by Christian parents. Uh, my dad is a pastor still to this day in East Los Angeles, California. I got a shout out my mom and dad who are watching live online right now. Mwah, I love you. So. It was less about not doing the right thing. So as a Christian, I, I, I knew about 
the Holy Spirit. As a pastor's daughter, I knew more Bible verses and Bible history than I did American history, okay? So it wasn't about what I knew as I got older. Y'all, I began to do everything to live a victorious, empowered life like I read about in scripture. I did all the right things. The law-loving legalist in me, I was like, read the one your Bible, did it five times, pray with people, pray for people, pray with people, pray over people. Oh, oh, absolutely, pray for the gifts, amazing. Pray, absolutely, fast, did that, absolutely. And yet I wasn't seeing the effects of the power that we possess as the people of God. I wanted the faith that other people had when they should have been faithless. I wanted the joy that I saw him and her and they have when their life should have been joyless. I wanted the hope that many people in our church possessed when, I, when they could have been hopeless. I was living in a two-cylinder car when the Lord had destined me to be a Lambo. Okay, that's a Lamborghini, some urban vernacular for you. <laughs> and in Acts chapter two, the Spirit of God comes upon the disciples, which means followers of Jesus, and a man named Peter. Now, Peter was a roughneck brother. Peter was a fisherman. He had tattered seaside clothes. He had a bad accent like Pauly D from Jersey Shore. Yeah, Jesus, what up? Jim Tan Laundry, that's right. Peter, the fisherman, who had suffered from verbal diarrhea, impetuous attitudes where he cut somebody's ear off. See, I say things like, I will cut you, but Peter actually does, okay? <laughs> and all of a sudden, this, fish, this fisherman from Galilee with a bad seaside accent gives one of the greatest dissertations and apologetic defenses of the gospel under the authority of the Spirit of God. And then, and then he is so moved, he's moving people that scripture says that he, his words cut them to their core in Acts chapter two, verse 37. And then it says this in verse 38, Peter says, and you will receive the gift. Somebody say gift. Yeah. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, we have this gift and it's not a lame gift. I remember one Christmas, my second cousin gave me a box of socks and a McDonald's gift card. And y'all, I don't even like McDonald's, okay? I'm not talking about a lame gift. I'm talking about this gift has the power to change your life. And for many years, I was living a half-baked life wondering, what's wrong with me? Why can't I hear God? Why can't I get victory in this area? Now, maybe you're here today and we have different theological backgrounds. You come from different churches. Maybe it's your first time to church. Welcome home. Hello. But, but here's some reasons as I was deducing why we are so afraid of this gift and why we don't want this gift. Maybe you're sitting here and, and you're wondering, well, why, why, why is he called the Holy Ghost? That's kind of creepy. So maybe even just the name Holy Ghost is, might feel a little off-putting. I feel a little creepy or scary. Like the only ghost I know is Casper the Friendly Ghost and I didn't even really like him, okay? Like, I, I, I don't want that. Maybe, maybe we are fearful of this gift from God because it's unknown. We don't know what to do. We, we, we're afraid that if we open up this gift, like what's gonna happen? I've seen the gift abused and misused, which is another reason why people don't want the gift, this amazing gift of the Spirit of God. We've seen the gift manipulated and pandering to people. And so we're like, well, I, I, I like the gift. I, I have the gift. I, I have the gift. Yes, I have the gift, but I'm afraid to open it because is the Spirit of God going to send me to Botswana to serve little children when I just want to live in Springfield? Is, is the Spirit of God going to make me marry that snaggletooth brother with a unibrow and teeth coming out of his neck? Like, what is the Spirit of God going to want me to do? And if you're anything like me, I'm a control freak. So I'm like, eh, no, thank you. Don't know what to do with it. I'm gonna keep God in a box, okay? Because that feels way safer. But to make sure that we are all on the same page, when we talk about the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit in the Bible, I think sometimes we might get confused. So I'm a visual learner. Uh, and and when, I, when I discovered this verb change in the Bible, I couldn't help but share it with you. So I wanna say let's geek out, or shall I say Greek out, because we're gonna study some Greek today. Okay, in the New Testament, in the New Testament, uh, the Spirit of God is referred to in three different verbs. I'm gonna use this beautiful bottle of San Pellegrino, living water, mmm, yay, um, as, as the refreshing gift of God. Now, 
The three Greek verbs that are used first in the New Testament, the first one, if you're a note taker and a word nerd, you're gonna wanna write down para. In Latin, it's para, which means alongside. The Holy Spirit is alongside of us. We get our words like paramedic or paralegal, right? The Holy Spirit is alongside of us. But then there's this verb change where that verb changes from para to en, E-N. And it's exactly what it sounds like. The Spirit of God, ooh, exciting. <laughs> Explosive. <laughs> Comes in. Mmm, refreshing. When I say yes, God bless you. When I say yes to Jesus, it's a free blessing in the house of God. Y'all wanna sneeze, okay? <laughs> Just kidding, COVID, we don't wanna do that. Okay, so then the third. <laughs> So the second verb is N, but then something dynamic happens. In Acts chapter two, the verb changes to epi, E-P-I, and that means upon. That is when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples and overflowed them, and guess what? The birth of the church began to explode. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, I wanna make sure that we understand that there is a difference here. That when Pentecost happened in Acts chapter four, we see that the church begins to explode. And I've been brought here to tell you that we do not have to be afraid of this gift. We don't have to worry what other people are gonna think. We don't have to worry or, or feel like we have to put God in a box because the Holy Spirit isn't just chill bumps and, and, and goose pimples when you're like in worship, like, oh yes, the Spirit is here, I just feel him. No, 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 no. The Spirit of God isn't relegated to DSN or Sunday mornings here at James River. No, when, when I'm telling you about the Spirit of God, it isn't just to give you an emotional reaction. It's not just on Sunday mornings. The Spirit of God wants to be with you when you feel depressed and oppressed on Monday to lift your spirits. That the Spirit of God is with you on Tuesday as you're signing that business deal. That the Spirit of God is with you on Wednesday when you wanna give up on your diet, okay? That the Spirit of God is with you on Thursday when you wanna beat your child to next week. That the Spirit of God is with you when you up in the club hanging out with your friends on Friday night thinking you're going to go hang out in church on Sunday. The Spirit of God isn't relegated to this building. The Spirit of God is with us, alongside of us, and overflowing in us. This is a beautiful gift. But here's the truth. We like things we can understand. We like things that we can keep in a box. See, God the Father, we get that. Because whether your dad is present or not, good or bad, you understand the concept of father. We like God the Father. I understand that. Well, Jesus is son. I get that. Most of us know a son or have a son. So we, we, we get God the Father. We get Jesus the Son. But Holy Spirit, no, that's creepy. Now, when we take a look at Scripture, we take a look at Scripture, it's Father, Son, Spirit. The one. It's referred to in, in, in theological terms as Trinity, three in one. So why would we separate them? If you can explain your God, how big is your God? I wanna stand in the awe, I wanna stand in the wonder, and I don't wanna cut out one third of the power of God that we possess. Why are we living lives at 67%? I like God the Father, I get Jesus the Son, that's 67%, but I will ignore the 33% of the Godhead that has been entrusted to me. No, I want the fullness of everything that God has promised me. And here's the truth. God is in heaven, and Jesus ascended to the Father is in heaven, but the Holy Spirit is around us. So the question I'm asking those in the room, those online, those in Joplin is, do you believe in God or do you believe God? Because that's the difference. See, you can believe in God. I believe in this cosmic universe being, a, or I, I, I believe in a God. That's not what I'm asking. Do you believe God? Do you believe that you can do what he said that you can do and you can become who he said that you can be? Or have we theorized and quantified and, and rationalized why we don't need this God? Do we recognize the gift that we have, the gift that we possess as the people of God? Do we view it as a gift of power, to be empowered to live our everyday lives? Now, 
I bring this up, and the best way that I can explain it is when I was serving at my dad's church, I was like the events coordinator. I wasn't on staff, but I love God's people, and I wanted to serve, and I felt like I'm passionate about creating experiences for people to encounter the Lord, and so my dad said, hey, B, do you think we can plan a, a trip? And I said, yeah, sure. So we planned a five-day cruise to Alaska. There was Bible studies in the morning and Bible studies at night, and then we'd hang out during the day. Well, there was this one couple, uh, Steve and Maria, and Steve and Maria were celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. So sweet. Their kids sent them on this trip. This was the first trip that they had ever taken in their married life together. So that night, uh, our first welcome night, I made sure that all of our travelers were in their room but came down for dinner. Well, if you know anything about cruising, the dinners are like the best part of the cruise. Like it is next level opulent. I mean, there's china and there's cutlery and there's baby forks and big forks and soup spoons and dessert spoons. I mean, it was just doing the most. You had servers to order your food, but then you had buffet stations. You had a fountain of chocolate, a fountain of cheese, a fountain of anything. Who even knows? I mean, this was the place that you wanted to be, the grand banqueting hall. But Steve and Maria weren't there. The next night at dinner, I did a head cap tally and was making sure that the guests were there, and Steve and Maria weren't there. The third night, same thing. So on the fourth day, I find Steve, and I said, Brother Steve, what's up? Do you not want to eat in the grand banqueting hall with the rest of us? He said, what do you mean? I said, Steve, we have nightly dinners that are opulent and amazing, and they serve lobster, and they serve steak, and anything that you want to order. And he said, that, that's for me? I said, Yes, Steve, that is totally for you. It's limitless, you have access to it. The price has been paid. Let me tell you something, my sisters, you have access to an upgrade and the price has already been paid. And you wanna sit there and live half-baked lives eating pool food on this whack cruise when you could be sitting, being served this amazing food and with between every bite of lobster that Eat. Steve was dipping in his garlic butter because the brother found out it was free and he not had one, not two, but three lobsters. And in between his bites, he said, are you sure this is free? I said, the price has been paid, okay? So today, church, I hope you eat up and dip it in some garlic butter because the price has been paid. The price has been paid, sisters. He gave us this gift, and I don't want us to be fearful of it or think like, well, the Holy Spirit is weird. No, people are weird, okay? <laughs> so I mean the Spirit of God is weird. Let me back this up. Jesus gave some radical instructions to the disciples, and he told them, hey, guess what? You are gonna be empowered to live a life that you cannot imagine. And in John chapter 14, Jesus gives them a promise, and that promise becomes a presence in Acts chapter two. Turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 14. And yes, I'm throwing a lot of scripture at you, but I'm a word nerd at heart. So write it down, jot it down, memorize it, get a tattoo on your forearm, but don't, don't make your mama mad. If she said no tattoos, don't do it. But in John chapter 14, mom, I obeyed you. I have no tattoos. I love you. Okay, John chapter 14, verse 12 says this. Whoever, ooh, I just got stuff there. Whoever, whoever, somebody say whoever. <laughs> say it like it's for you, whoever. That is for black, white, Asian, Haitian, Croatian, Eurasian, short, tall, skinny, fluvy, old, young, rich, poor, whoever. For the, for the girl that lost her cool on her way here and was cussing in traffic, whoever. For the girl that's shacking up with her boss and he's married, whoever. For the marriage is on the brink of divorce and you know that you're the ticket to your husband's salvation, whoever. Whoever believes in me, these are the words of Jesus. Whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing. Oh, wait, T.O., time out. They will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in his Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Yes. But I pause. Because in Western culture, in Western society, even specifically in developed nations, much like the United States, when we say greater, it's associated with more. More money, more status, more favor, more influence that will lead to greater money, greater status, and greater influence. But is that the greater that Jesus was talking about? No, if you take a look at the scope of scripture, Jesus did both natural and supernatural things here on this earth. 
So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, I just wanna recognize that many of us come from different backgrounds. I, that's not lost on me. Some of you guys are hearing this and you're like, this is totally cool. Other of you guys are hearing this and be like, this is totally crazy. I come from a, a conservative background where it was um, talked about openly, but I really did not know or feel comfortable with talking about the Holy Spirit and the outworking of Holy Spirit. Maybe you are more from a charismatic camp where you hear Holy Spirit and you are like, bring out your praise banners. You're gonna do a lap of honor and bring out your shofar. You know, like we all have different backgrounds, so it's not lost on me. But Jesus did some pretty insane things here on earth. If I were to ask you, hey, what did Jesus do? Someone's gonna shout back, he healed the blind, the lame could walk, the deaf could hear, the blind to see, the dead can live, hallelujah. But you know what he also did? He forgave his enemies. He loved the outsider. He cared for the widow. He played with kids. And if Jesus needed the spirit of God to do what he was called to do on this earth, the dove ascending upon him at baptism, how much more do you and I need the Spirit of God to pour out into our lives? I need His help when I want to lose my cool with my husband. I need His help when thinking about how to open up and, and actively uh, talk about an ancient passage like the Bible and make it relevant and modern for today. I need the Spirit of God to give me self-control. I need the Spirit of God to give me love and forgiveness. What do you need? Because the Spirit of God wants to overflow in your life. So when Jesus said, hey, you will do these things and greater, y'all, I'm for the greater. So it's either you believe the words of Jesus or you don't. Now, um, I, my concern is that some of us are more concerned with upgrading our technology than we are upgrading our faith, all right? So I think it's high time that we open up this box, this free gift from the Lord, and I know that it radically changed my life. That's the reason why I'm so passionate about it. I, I had to stop just believing in God, in a God, and start believing God. When I heard about the power that we possess as the people of God, I began to get spiritually selfish. I was like, oh, okay, Lord, this is for me? Well, give me an extra dose of the Holy Ghost, all right? Give me all the gifts outpoured in my life. I want to see what you have for me. I want to be your hands. I want to be your feet. I want to have a mind of Christ. I want my words to be words spoken straight from heaven to your people. I want to have eyes to see and ears to hear. I want you to work in my life. Now, to make sure that we're all on the same page. When I talk about Holy Spirit, I think in our English language, it's very limited. So when the Bible was translated out of the original languages, the Old Testament is in Hebrew, the New Testament is in Greek and some pieces of Aramaic, I feel like we get a better understanding and explanation of the word if we look at the original context. Okay, so for note takers, I'm gonna teach you some Hebrew today. For those that know me, you know that I am 1% Jew. I'm Jew-ish, okay? So I'm gonna teach you some Hebrew today. I need you to repeat after me. Somebody shout back, ruach. Okay, that was okay, but you gotta go at the end, okay? It's a ruach. And it means this. It is a breath or breath-like wind, even a violet exhalation. When, when the Spirit of God is referred to in the Old Testament, it's ruach. And then the, the, the term, our understanding, the title changes to pneuma in the New Testament. That's the Greek word to describe a current of air, a blast, a, a, a breeze. Now, jot this down, study it later, but let me read Job 34 over us. Job 34, 14 and 15 says this. If God were to take back his spirit and withdraw his breath, all life would cease and humanity would turn to dust. Now, this might not mean anything to you, but let me tell you something. I was a lifeguard for 10 years. Move over, Hasselhoff. Oltoff is here, okay? <laughs> One day, I'll tell you about the time I saved this guy's life. Hand to heaven. I'm dramatic, but I'm not a liar. But as a lifeguard... <laughs> For 10 years, let me tell you that we are not tested on CPR every year. We are not tested on first aid every year. We are tested every single year on rescue breathing. Why? Because breath is the most valuable and vital thing to our existence. Breath makes your heart beat, your eyes blink, your cheeks pink, and, and makes your brain think, okay? We need brain. And here's a newsflash. If you don't breathe, you don't live. It is vital to our existence. 
Do you know where the word revival comes from? In the truest sense of the word, it means that people have lost their capacity to breathe and need to be revived. Yes. And that has been the cry of my heart, not just for the Father's House Orange County, but for his capital C church. Lord, send revival. Allow your people to breathe again. May we inhale your goodness and may we exhale our worry. May we inhale power and exhale doubt. And I know so many Christians that are walking around like, I can't breathe. I, I, I. It's like people have spiritual asthma. We've lost our ability to breathe and we just feel like, I can't get to Sunday. And you come to the house of God and it's filled with faith and you breathe. But then you go out through your week on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and we have been dependent on other people spoon feeding us faith when the truth of the matter is, you got the gift, sister. You got the upgrade. The spirit of God wants to breathe in you. From the beginning of human history, God's been wanting to breathe life into us. And so I took a passage from the Old Testament. I took a passage from the prophetic books in the middle of the Bible. And I followed this up with the words of Jesus as I read this over us today. In the Old Testament, going back to the first book of the Bible, Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man from dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Let's pepper in a little prophetic book out of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 39, seven says this. Then he said to me, this is, this is the prophet uttering the words of the Lord, prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come breath from the four winds and breathe into the slain that they may live again. And then these are the words of Jesus in John 20, verse 22. And Jesus breathed, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. What do we know about breath? If you're a note taker, breath is consistent. You don't have to remind yourself to breathe. You just do. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. The same consistency that you have in your everyday breathing in and breathing out is the same consistency we have through the Spirit of God. We don't need to work for it. The gift is already given us. We breathe in and breathe out and the Spirit of God is there day in and day out. Secondly, breath is invisible. You can't see. I'm breathing out right now. You can't see it. But if I were to blow a bubble or blow on a piece of paper, you would see the effects of it. This is why Jesus says in John 3, 8, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And lastly, breath is powerful. Breath is powerful. Breath keeps you alive. I'm here to tell you that the breath of life, the Spirit of God can be consistent in your life. That though the Spirit of God may be invisible, the effects of the Spirit of God are causing movement in your life. And breath can be powerful. I bring this up to you because the Spirit of God isn't just a gift for us to possess and hold on to and never let go and think it's for us four and no more. We're a holy huddle. We're here at DSN and no one else can have it. No, 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 no. I want us to know that when we experience the power of the indwelling of Jesus and his spirit. Not only does your life change, not only do you come to life, but those around you. That we could rescue, breathe for those around us. And I know that physically, not just spiritually, because in 2017, I experienced my very first DFL. And there at this huge arena, Thousands of women are gathered there. I remember during worship, God began to speak to me. And that's another talk for another day. But let me tell you something. The Spirit of God wants to speak to us. Second Chronicles 16, 9 says that the eyes of the Lord wander to and fro to see whose heart is loyal to him so that he could show himself strong. And that day, God began to speak to me and bring to, my, my, bring to mind women who needed prayer. I began to write down. I began to write down, I began to write down, but I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, 
Spirit of God, I know you are whispering your words for your women, but I don't know what to do with it. Then Pastor Debbie goes into a moment of prayer and she called the prayer team forward and she said, hey, come forward if you need prayer. We wanna pray with you. We have a team ready to pray for you. And people came forward. But so many people came forward that I got out of my seat and I went down and I began just to pull women out of a line. And me and Pastor Jen from Summit in, 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 in Lee, Kansas. Um, is that I say it right? Yes? Lee Summit, yes. She's my witness, I'm not lying. Every single woman that came forth I would pray for them and I would go back to a word that the Lord gave me, one after the other after the other. And I vividly remember meeting a girl. She was so visibly wrecked. Her name was Miranda. And she said, my mom wants to be here, but she's so sick, she couldn't come. And I pulled out my journal that I began to write down, God speaking, and I said, is this her illness? And she said, yes, that's exactly what it is. I said, I believe the Spirit of God is gonna heal her. And I know that it looks grim, and I don't ever wanna say this if it's not true, but I have a conviction that we are gonna pray with faith that God would heal your mom. She looked at me, maybe it's skeptical, maybe a little leery, but she said, yes, and we prayed for her mom. A few weeks later, she popped into a direct message and she said, you won't believe this, but my mom went to the doctor and she's getting better when she should have been getting worse. A couple months later, she said, Bianca, my mom is healed. And the last time that I was at DFL, Miranda and her mom were here. I just want to tell you, church, that the Spirit of God is not something that we think about or pontificate about. He is working in our midst and He wants to use you to be His hands. He wants to use you to be His feet. He wants your voice to declare what heaven is whispering here for the earth. So I'm asking you, do you want to be used by God? Do you wanna step into a new level of purpose? Do you wanna have greater clarity on what God is calling you? Do you wanna exhibit the fruits of the Spirit? Well, guess what? Fruits of the Spirit are an outpouring of the work of the Spirit that is dwelling within us. So today, we're gonna to be bold, we're gonna be brave, we're gonna be brazen, we're gonna be daring to believe that God is who He says He is and He can do what He says that He can do. Thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we wanna let you know that we'd love for you to be a part of our online family. As well, we'd love if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll be so glad you did because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content, and it helps you know when we go live for our weekly services. We hope you have an amazing day and thank you again for watching. God bless.